Hey, what up, people? How you doing today? It's your man back again, J. Ezo Espresso, baby. How you doing? I hope you are having a good time. It's beautiful atmosphere here today. Let me go straight to the topic, y'all. Please, I want you all to write hashtag no war in Africa. Hashtag we want peace in Africa. Like a whole lot is happening right now within the West African nation. So, and uh, in the next one week or so, we're not sure what could happen. I just pray, we pray that it shouldn't go that far. Okay, you all know these so called Wegnans. These guys, uh, their job, it's not like you sending out resume to go apply for a job and be a lawyer, a doctor. These guys are well trained expertise who are specialized in fighting war and dying for the cost of money. So these guys are from Russia and they're called Wagner. So they are in Africa right now, precisely in Niger, and they want to defend Niger. Yeah, like I said, we have a whole lot of Western military base in Africa. You all want to be thinking, why are they in Africa? I keep saying, these guys are going to clash in Africa, and I think that is where the World War III is going to happen if time is not taken. But we pray it doesn't happen. But however, though, we have a new gatekeeper right now in Central Africa. Yeah, I mean, West Africa precisely. And that is the man called Ahmed Bolatinibu. This man happens to be the president of Nigeria right now at the moment. Okay, election was conducted early this year. He didn't win, but however, the election was rigged. He was sworn in on the 29th of May of this year. He didn't win. His competency, the election result, has been challenged by the guy who won the election. Yeah, and you're telling me of democracy. Which democracy? Democracy works in the West. That is why we live in the West. I have a privilege and opportunity to be living in Canada, and I'm proud to say I'm a Canadian. For 23 years, almost going to be 23 years, I have lived in Canada. I have the Canadian passport. I have every privilege and every opportunity as a Canadian. Why? Because we all left our homeland for a greener pasture. Because our leaders are a bunch of corrupt leaders who only cares about themselves. All they do is stealing and looting. And they are the gatekeeper and the puppet to the West. Okay, so right now, a lot has been happening. France colonized 14 countries in Africa, y'all. Did you hear what I said? France colonized 40 countries in Africa. And at the end of the slavery, France gave those countries conditions, and they have to meet up this condition. And the first condition is that in every of these 14 countries, France have to have their military base in their country, which they assigned, they agreed. Why? We don't know. Because, again, like I said, back in the years, in those days, they took advantage over our greedy and corrupt leaders and incompetent and uneducated leaders. The France and the Westerners and the Europeans took advantage over them. That was how the slavery was able to be successful. Because slavery was a choice. And they were able to manipulate into our corrupt leaders, our corrupt system. That is what happened about that. But let's leave that for another day. So right now, four countries in Africa, within the West Africa, part of the 14 countries that France colonized, they are breaking their ties with France. They say enough is enough. Because the old man that has been their leader, their president of those countries, they are literally the puppets to France and the gatekeepers, allowing France to come into the country, steal everything. So we got Mali, we got Niger, Niger, we got uh, Niger, we got Guinea, those four countries, like this, enough is enough. So the military came together and took mantles of leadership from the so-called democratic elected leaders, those that have been dancing to France. Young military and able dynamic energy, energetic military officers, they took over. So right now, the current one right now is Niger. Okay, a general have just taken over. And the France is crying. Oh, no, we can't do that. This is democracy. You've got to leave the democracy. The democratic elected governor, uh, president, he wasn't elected. The election was rigged. But the fact that he's been dancing to France soon, France preferred having him there. And now when the military came in, they caught ties with France. They caught everything with France. They told France, you all need to get out of our land, straight up. Do you know why France is there? France are there because they've been stealing uranium from Nigeria. And they have been given the president, the president has been given them access 
to steal and loot everything they want to steal because Africa is blessed with every natural resources. Despite they have stolen for over 400 years, they steal everything. They steal much in abundance on the land in Africa, despite how much they are stealing. So now the military has taken over, they kick them out, that you all need to leave. So now France is crying. And America be the partner of the G7, American supported France. And they have no other person to call but a new puppet, a new gatekeeper of the West in West Africa. And that is the man who happened to be the president of Nigeria right now. The man that the election was rigged. The man that his competency is still being challenged because this same man, Tinibu Ahmed Bola, who is the president of Nigeria right now, back in 1993, had a criminal record, criminal charges enough in the United States with drugs and everything. In order for him not to go to jail, he forfeited $460,000. Back in the days, you all can imagine what is the, I mean, the equivalent of $460,000 there right now. Oh, yeah. So right now, he happened to be the president of Nigeria, selected, y'all. Listen, y'all. Selected. He wasn't elected. So now, the France and America call it, y'all. We want to back your competency. We understand you didn't win the election. The case is the call. But this is what we want you to do. We want you to tell the Niger that they cannot take over. The military cannot take over the coup, and they, it's been annoyed. Or tell them that you're going to go to war. And do you know what this guy did? Of course, for his own special interest, he has to call Niger Republic and tell them, you're listening. The coup leader, the general, has to step down and put in the man that was just being kicked out. The general is like, what the heck are you talking about? Niger and Nigeria are two different countries. You got nothing against us. The only way you can declare war. Hello? What are the natural resources of Niger? Uranium. What are the natural resources of France? Niger. <laughs> you get it? If you don't get it, forget about it. <laughs> That's funny. Did you hear what he said? They asked, what did Niger have? Niger have uranium. And what did France have? France have Niger. This so-called Western country, they have nothing. All everything they have stolen from Africa and they still keep looting and they're looting. But the good thing is that everything they have stolen from Africa, they brought it to their country and invest into their country and build their country to how beautiful it is today. And that is why a whole lot of us have led Africa to come here for a greener pasture and even ended up being their citizen. Like, I personally have been in Canada for over 23 years. I'm a Canadian citizen. I have every privilege and opportunity as a Canadian. Yeah, but I'm born Africa. I was born in Nigeria some 40-some years ago. If African leaders used our money, kept our property, defend their territorial integrity, use our natural resources well to build Africa, we don't need to come to Canada, to US, to Australia, to UK, to go be seeking for asylum seeker. Just like some people are going through the Mediterranean Sea because they want to go for a greener pasture somewhere. Since our African leaders are failed, they are corrupt. All they do is looting and looting and looting. And they are the gatekeeper to the Westerners, giving free access to the Westerners to come to Africa to load our resources. But okay, I'm not going to say too much. I'm going to put a little clip. I want you guys to stay tuned and watch it. Where you're going to see this journalist, a professional journalist, analyzing about the consequences and the reason why Bola Ahmed Tinubu decided to take this challenge that he wants to go to war with Niger. He said he wants to defend democracy. And this is the man that didn't win election. His election was rigged. He was selected. He didn't win. But he was just trying to please to the West so that at the end of the day, if he's going to be impeached or if he's going to be kicked out, the same West will come, oh, no, no, we need Ahmed Bola Tinubu, blah, blah, blah. And that is why he has chosen this step. But not thinking about the consequences and the people that he said is the governor or the president at the moment. So stay tuned, watch this, and I'll come back for the conclusion of this video. Thank you. Tinubu ordered electricity to be cut off to neighboring Niger. He's also been one of the strongest advocates for a military intervention, but did not win over the Senate, which actually rejected his call. And despite condemning the legitimacy of uh, Niger's new rulers, the Nigerian president's own record has actually been called into question. This by a recent report by the Grey Zone investigative outlet. You have just over and over throughout his political career, the these huge corruption scandals that have 
somehow not managed to uh, destroy his his political career throughout this process. He he's been. Uh, meeting repeatedly, according to WikiLeaks cables that I reviewed, uh, with the U.S. Embassy and its its officials, and uh, basically briefing them over and over again on the political landscape in Nigeria. The U.S. Uh, ambassador at the time said that his assessments have been uh, very useful for for the Americans, um, and so you have to wonder. You know, why was Bolatinibu never indicted in the United States? Why was he allowed to keep so much of the initially seized money from his bank accounts that was said to be involved in, in, in drug trafficking? Uh, is, is, did, what kind of deal was he able to strike with, with American authorities? Um, and you have to also understand that, uh, Bola Tenebo is the perfect kind of imperial puppet for the United States. This is what they do over and over again, is they find a compromised figure, somebody that they can exert leverage on, and they prop them up, and the second that they become no longer useful, they they go after them, and they get rid of them. They put them in jail or have them uh, taken out, you know? Um, so he, he, for, for, for what's going on in Niger right now and in, in West Africa, he's the perfect person for the United States because they can basically make him do whatever they want. The bigger problem here is that the Nigerian Senate has rejected his request to invade Niger. So, uh, he's, he's, it looks like he's, uh, trying to use his power at ECOWAS, the uh, regional bloc uh, that he chairs, um, to to have an invasion. And, and just uh, two days ago, um, ECOWAS uh, said that they would uh, attack Niger, but they won't announce when and where or how. Important to note that Niger is vital in helping to keep the lights on in Europe. It's been its third largest supplier of uranium for the past two decades, which is, of course, key for nuclear energy. And amid the political turmoil in the West African country, Paris insists it must be business as usual. So back to Alex Rubenstein one more time from the gray zone. The future of, of Western economies, at least insofar as Western planners see it, uh, rely on, on the exploitation of low wage miners in in Western Africa, and and so um, this you know the United States wants to do a Green New Deal that's going to require rare earth minerals. The United States wants to keep um, funding the military industrial complex while they can't produce sophisticated weapon systems without this kind of stuff. Uh, and any any kind of uh, smart technology or, 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 or green technology relies heavily on this stuff. And so uh, this, this is in many ways a battle for the future of, of economic dominance. What's at risk here is, is a regional proxy war that is, is very dangerous uh, for, for, for not just West Africa, but you know, these things spill over. And I believe that this conflict in West Africa has, has a potential to, to spy a lot of control and, and and brings us that much closer to World War III territory. And perhaps no surprise that the U.S. has not been sitting on the fence over this. There she is right there, top official Victoria Newland. She made a mad dash to Niger where she had, quote, difficult negotiations with some of the coup leaders, pressuring them to reinstate the deposed president. However, Newland met neither with the ousted president nor with the new leader. And in the wake of Washington cutting off funding, it says it will resume the flow of cash if indeed the new military junta stands down. The secretary announced on Friday uh, also that we are pausing assistance to the government um, for the time being. Um, that assistance will uh, affect uh, development aid to the government, security aid to the government. Um, it's a significant amount. Um, I, I don't have a number because it's a pause, and it's a pause that we would hope would be reversed um, if the uh, junta leaders would step aside and restore constitutional order tomorrow. That pause would be um, uh, the, the the security the pause would go away and security assistance would be reinstated. Um, but as we've made clear, hundreds of millions of dollars are at stake. Hey, thank you for watching that. Did you all hear? Those are professional journalists that have just given us a good details analysis about this same person I'm talking about, the so-called president of Nigeria today, Bola Ametinobo, the man that never won an election but was declared 
His election was declared at about 4 a.m. in the morning when people were still sleeping. The election was stolen. His mandate, our mandate, the people's mandate were stolen. He didn't win. But in order to solidify his seat as a Nigerian president, he has to dance to the tune of the West. Why would Kamala Harris, the United States president, call him and be giving him instruction? Why would the France, out of nowhere, show interest? Yes, we don't want coup in Africa. We want democracy. Because democracy is what gives us opportunity today with people like us who have YouTube that we're speaking. During the military, you dare not can even speak. But the truth is that despite the democracy today in Africa, do Africa really work? I mean, do democracy really work in Africa? In Africa, you can't speak. You can't dare talk to the government. Your house will be on fire. So we rather even prefer the military in Africa than democracy. Democracy just gave people the avenue to steal and loot without any consequences. And now that the military has taken over, the military is going to start bringing them to justice. Yeah? So that is what we're going through right now. Please, I want you guys to leave a thumbs up and write a comment, please. Hashtag no war in Africa. Hashtag we want peace in Africa. And yeah, guys, check out the merchandise. I have a merchandise in the store. Check it out. You might like one or two things, you know, and I also have membership partnership. Check it out. If something you would like to join, I truly want to appreciate you. And I want to say thank you. We'll see you next time. Big up. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like and share. Subscribe to my channel, J Ezo Expression, and comment below. Thank you for watching Jay Ezo Expression. Big up.